Hey, it's Alex from Voiceflow, and welcome back to this case study series about what we learned from launching an AI-powered Q&A chatbot for Hack the North, the largest hackathon in Canada. This is a go-to guide where you'll learn a blueprint for making real-world AI solutions, looking at everything from evaluation to building, and finally to QA iteration and deployment. This video is looking at the third phase of building an AI solution, quality assurance, getting ready for deployment, and iterating. I'll walk you through the process of doing quality assurance for AI solutions that is maybe a little bit different to quality assurance for other types of projects, add the debugging process with Voiceflow, the importance of monitoring analytics and experiments in AI systems, and then when that's all done, we're gonna look at collaboration in a team for iterating on AI projects, and then finally getting ready for the day of the launch of your AI product. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, I recommend you go watch them first since we'll be building off them here. But here's a run through of the case study so far. Hack the North gets lots of questions from participants that could be answered by the documents we give them. We identified this as a problem that we could solve using retrieval augmented generation and voice flow by building an agent that can answer through Slack in one shot. We did a planning phase where we prepared a product requirement document and technical plan and met some stakeholders to iterate on the product requirements. And then in the last video, we went through the development of the actual product, some of the challenges faced, and we walked through some of the implementation of some of the features. And now we're finally ready to wrap up the project with quality assurance, preparing for deployment, and then launching our solution. So let's get straight into it with talking about quality assurance for AI solutions. So it's extremely important to do good quality assurance for any project, but especially when it comes to testing your AI solutions. That's because AI is a newer technology, we might not be as used to working with it, and often it's less deterministic than other types of programming. So when we're gonna QA our AI solution, there's a couple of things we're looking for. Obviously, we're looking for correct technical behavior. It should be answering in the threads correctly. It should be sending the right monitoring messages and storing the right analytics. But more subtly, we're also looking for high quality answers out of our agent. We want its answers to be thorough and giving the user all the information it wants, as well as being completely accurate. We also definitely want to be focusing on good user experience. We want to make sure our bot isn't clunky to work with and that it's easy for organizers day of the event. Because at Hack the North, we can't be wasting organizer time. That's one of the requirements of this entire project is to be saving us time. So it's really important that it doesn't actually become a bottleneck. And we can only really evaluate the quality of the user experience by doing these tests. In our case, we also definitely want to see how the bot behaves in emergencies or edge case scenarios. That's often a problem with AI, where it might explain too much or do the wrong thing. And we want to be keeping our participants safe at the event in the case that they're using a Q&A chatbot during an emergency. The last thing that's really important in this AI QA is actually identifying missing information we haven't collected yet for our agent. Again, all its answers are based off knowledge we're inserting into the knowledge base. So if we don't have some information put in, we won't be able to get answers out. So through QA, both with artificial answers, organizer answers, and past historical answers, we're able to identify what documents were missing and need to be collected. So for this at Hack the North, we developed a thorough quality assurance plan and then sent it off to a bunch of our organizers so they could see what it's like to play with the project and get their direct feedback on what features they want added or changed, any questions they have that aren't correctly answered, and collecting any other feedback that they might have. In this phase of the case study, I also put special emphasis on triaging issues between missing data and missing technology. So either bug fixes that have to happen, improvements in the voice flow agent, or more information I need to collect from different logistics teams or organizers. So when problems inevitably do come up, we need to be ready for debugging with voice flow. In our case study, we're able to debug in a couple of different ways. First of all, the monitoring messages were extremely useful. They let us instantly see after a question is answered, how well was it answered? Was it a success? Was it a failure? Was it an emergency? And it would also give us more information, like what was the exit reason, what path we went down, what score it was given, and a link straight to the actual VoiceFlow transcript so we could look at it. Speaking of that, VoiceFlow transcripts are absolutely your best friend. They give you all the information you need about your agent and how it went through the actual reasoning of the conversation, especially if you add a couple more debug logs. If you didn't know, in VoiceFlow, whenever you're looking at a transcript by default, it only shows you the messages that are sent. But in the top right, you can actually check a box up here to show debug messages. 
These messages show you all the reasoning that happens. Some of these are actually default logs sent by VoiceFlow, like this uh, KB set AI step that's made. So first of all, at the top, it shows you the intents that were classified. So here, when I just say test, it's just going to uh, give the none intent because nothing special happened. But then we know it's entering the smart announcement KB lookup. And we have some debug logs, so we can see that the malicious message was not malicious. We can see some paths it went down, some variables it updated, and in the end, we can see that it failed because the smart KB output was false. But actually, these are custom debug logs right here that I'm putting into my VoiceFlow agent. You can do this yourself through a custom action. You don't need to write any custom special code for this. But all it is is I made a template in my template library called debug. It would have a JavaScript block that would set a string called debug message to a certain value, and I could use whatever JavaScript I wanted to actually set it. So here I'm just have a string and I insert some variables inside of it just so I can have some better context. And then I'll be sending a custom action. And all you need for this to work is take the custom action step out of this dev section, call it debug, put some squarely braces, quotes, message, colon, debug message, exactly how I have it written here. If you do the json.stringify, it'll actually already put quotes for you. So if it match exactly like this, you can add debug logs anywhere you want. So that's what's actually happening here after the smart announcement happened. It's going to create a debug message called smart KB output. It'll say the output status, and then it'll use this debug log to send it out. And that's how I can actually see inside my transcript. And that's what makes it really useful to know that here, the smart KB output was false and that we didn't find anything. And if it said I wanted something to come up when I sent test, I know I have to add a document for that. The last thing that was really powerful in this Hack the North Tune A case study for quality assurance and for debugging was the end reasons. These are logged pretty much everywhere, including the monitoring channel and inside the actual analytics that are stored in Airtable, but are really helpful to let us know what path did the agent go down. You can see these in the messages on Slack here, right? It says end type, answer fail, end reason, KB not found. But these are actually set from inside VoiceFlow with a custom action. So when we finish any route we go down, we either have this red step or this green step. This green step says answer success and passes from voice load to our Slack bot some other information. So it says that the answer was successful. And the reason it was successful is we actually found something in the knowledge base. So if we're debugging later and we see a log that went wrong and we see the reason is KB found, we can know that something happened in this path. This is also how we're able to attach the AI generated score. And the scoring is really useful to be able to quickly filter out what kind of answers are good or bad, and which helps organizers especially investigate those really low quality answers with a score of one or two. I actually used all these debugging strategies together to solve a problem. So when we were asking questions about judging, we would ask it, when is submissions due? And it would keep giving us the wrong answer. We weren't quite sure why. I had looked in the knowledge space, but there weren't any documents that should be that wrong. So what I actually did is I looked at the debug message in the monitoring channel, and then I followed through the transcript to look at what flow it had gone down. What I saw is that it had gone to the judging workflow because it was a question about submission times, and I guess that falls into judging. Then it had actually had a failure with the smart announcement lookup. And then I could determine that because the exit reason was judging good AI, I could know for sure that it had gone down this path, which led me to this hard-coded block. And I had realized that I had input of the time wrong here. So thanks to all the debugging and monitoring that I have, it was way faster for me to find the actual cause of my problem. And I really, really, really recommend that if you're building a real world AI solution, you consider monitoring methods like this. Put lots of debugging, put exit reasons, keep track of your transcripts and look back at them easily. But now that we've mentioned all the debugging, how do we actually know what's going on? Well, that's thanks to our extensive monitoring, analytics, and to the experiment that we ran. So as part of the quality assurance and iteration process, we were really able to play with a lot of the monitoring and analytics we've built out for this project. It was one of the core requirements in our product requirement document that we got out of our discussions of stakeholders who were a bit more concerned about the viability of this project and wanted to have a good eye on what's going on. So this product requirement came out as implementing a Slack channel for monitoring transcripts. In the final product, it looks a little bit like this. Every single question sent has a monitoring message sent associated with a success, their question, where it was sent, the link to go see the discussion if you wanted to contribute, also a link to the voice or transcript if you want to analyze what went wrong, as well as the exit reason in plain text to understand what path did it go down and a score. This allows us to do a lot of interesting things like notifying organizers 
when emergencies are detected, or notifying the help desk when questions are failed to be answered by the automated system or have really low quality answers that come back. This is the extra work you need to put in for visibility to make an actual AI project ready for deployment. On top of this, for after the event, we decided we want to collect a lot of analytics to be able to decide, hey, was this project successful, get some metrics on answering rate, cost to see if it's actually viable to repeat in future years. So for this, we implemented an extra system that we talked about in the development video, where we're storing analytics in Airtable. It's a large database system. We're able to store records for every single question that was answered, the time it took to give the answer, the score, the exit reason, the user who asked it, and we're able to compile this for lots of interesting data. This includes an experiment that we ran it's really useful to treat AI systems like this more like a science, where you need to run experiments to make sure that they're working well. So I ran two experiments. I sent over 160 questions from one of our previous events to our AI system, and then looked at a lot of how they were answered and judged them myself for qualitative measures, but then also took advantage of all the analytics we have to make some graphs that sort of tell the story of how successful our AI system is. So here we see, that it's able to automatically successfully answer 80% of questions. And in the data set we had, 7.5% of them were emergencies. So the only failures was actually 13% of questions, which is a really impressive metric to get out. We also saw histograms of how long it takes to answer. And we see that most questions are answered in under 10 seconds, which is 60 times better than what we had seen when it was manually being answered by organizers, where answer times are sometimes around the 10 minute mark. We also get some interesting metrics on what kinds of exit reasons there are, so what kinds of questions are people asking. This can be really useful as we're looking to improve the agent to see, hey, we should invest more time in this while we're iterating or more debugging, or we can look for correlations maybe. Hey, do we have a lot of failures in this specific flow so we can have some more nuanced data? And the last metric that's really interesting here is we can see the histogram of the process scores. We can see that the AI's answer quality is actually pretty good with a lot of threes, fours, and fives, and very few ones and twos. And these zeros are either failures or emergencies that were detected that we just don't grade. For a full description of the actual experiment that was ran, make sure to look at the end of the full walkthrough video. But the important takeaway here is that you yourself should consider how your organization can run experiments like this with past data. It was actually really useful for us to understand that our bot is working well and have more confidence that it's ready for deployment. As part of the deployment process, we need to make sure our entire team is ready to work with the agent. And that's when it comes to collaborating with a team on our AI solution using VoiceFlow. So to get everyone on the same page, we wrote a VoiceFlow handbook that could explain to our team members, hey, this is how the system works, this is what you need to know to be able to work with it, and especially there's a lot of information about dealing with the knowledge base because documents might have to be added or removed or updated. So explaining to our team members how they can do that is great. And it's also really great that with VoiceFlow, we can add lots of comments to our workflow so that everyone can sort of understand more accessibly what's going on to debug, make changes where they need, or just let your leadership and stakeholders understand the actual behavior of your agent. This is also really important because adding people to your VoiceFlow workspace lets them look at your agent's transcripts, which is really useful, as we mentioned before, for debugging. The last thing we need to do is preparing for launch day of. We made a copy of our entire project and created a bot to be put in the event Slack so it's ready to go. We've made sure to configure all the settings with all the pings and channels we want to be using. We cleaned up our database, deployed the Slack bot to Kubernetes, and did some last second quality assurance on the bot to make sure that it's all ready to go. Now we have a couple weeks before the event's about to happen and we're pretty confident that this launch of an AI solution is gonna go great because of all the work we put in, in the planning, development, and QA and iteration phases of this actual project. And that's it. Congratulations. You made it to the end of this three-part case study. A retrospective will be out after Hack the North happens this year, so make sure to get subscribed to the Voiceful YouTube channel for that. If there's any videos you missed, either about the planning or the development of the project, you can find those below. And there you'll also be able to find the full hour and a half technical walkthrough that I did with the nitty gritty of how this project works, how the voice flow agent is laid out, and how you can set it up for yourself. It's been an absolute pleasure to share this case study with you all. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you around.